Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part six of the fire series. Sorry, I've been offline for a while. I was sick for quite a while. I've got my voice back and uh, been busy. So, Hopefully you know how it is. All right, let's take a look at fire. Now, in the book of Leviticus, the Lord wanted sacrifices by the Levite priests by fire. And, of course, the devil wants, he wanted, uh, well, let's take a look. In 2 Chronicles, chapter 28, starting in verse 1, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, so he was a king. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. So Ahaz was a king of Judah, but yet he was doing evil like the kings of Israel. Now Israel and Judah were divided kingdoms back then, sort of like the north and the south in the American Civil War. Same people, different capitals, different land areas. Uh, so, and he walked, for he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Now, Balaam was just a false satanic god. So, verse 3, moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire. Wow. So not only did he worship false gods, he, which is what, the first commandment? He also worshiped idols, and he sacrificed his own children to the devil by burning them probably alive. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen, that's the Canaanites, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. And this is what Satanism is all about, people. They do this to this day, which is why the Lord said, Oh, witches and Satanists, kill them. You know, people have no idea how many kidnapped children end up in this way. I mean, it's just, you know, the news media covers it up, but it happens, people. It happens. All right, so Satanists demand sacrifice by fire. Of course, they mimic the sacrifices that the Lord wanted by fire. Uh, that's why the in the first Passover, they took the lamb and they roasted it with fire. Now, there were times that like David and Solomon and Elijah, they called upon the Lord and there was fire that came down from heaven that took the sacrifices. How about 1 Chronicles 21 and verse 26? And David, we're talking King David, you know, the guy that uh, with Goliath, David and Goliath. And David built there 
an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord and he, he who, the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offerings. All right, let's continue. Second Chronicles 7, 1. Now, David had died and Solomon had taken his place as king of Judah. And at this time, they were a unified kingdom. There was no kingdom of Judah. There was no kingdom of Israel. It was all one. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Now, there's people that will tell you that the glory of the Lord, uh, these are the Judaizers, they'll tell you that Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, uh, is the glory of the Lord. No, it's not. The Shekinah, that's not a Bible word. It's a made-up word. It looks similar to a word, but actually they claim that the Holy Spirit is female, the queen of heaven. And, you know, God the Father and his wife, the queen of heaven, had a son, Jesus. Yeah, it's Kabbalah stuff. It's from the Talmud. And if you see anybody using Shekinah, uh, I would stay away from them. All right. All right, so skipping to verse 3, 2 Chronicles 7, 3. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground and upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. In 2 Chronicles 33, 6, you can read more about Satanism. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times, I guess astrology, and used enchantments, and used witchcraft, and dealt with a familiar spirit, that's a devil, and the wizards, he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Not a good thing. All right, let's keep going. Now, Elijah, and I did an hour and 45 minute study on Elijah. When Elijah confronted King Ahab and the prophets of Baal, or Baal, um, he had fire come down from heaven and consumed his sacrifice. Now, in the New Testament, the beast and the false prophet, they're going to have fire come down from the sky and consume their enemies. I'm going to cover that more in detail in a next coming study, but right now we're in the Old Testament. So, a lot of people don't know it, but the false prophet is going to mimic the miracles of Elijah, who is prophesied to come as one of the two witnesses to confront the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. All different names for the same entity. And... So, you know, it's going to look like some people are going to think, well, the people that don't believe in the New Testament, if you catch my drift, they're going to, most, probably the majority of them are going to be fooled by the false prophet and think that he is Elijah. And I believe he's going to call himself Elijah. But when the... Um, when they make an image to the beast and require everybody to bow down and worship that, uh, I hope that the true remnant realizes the Ten Commandments about worshiping idols. I think that'll be the tip-off that 
hey, wait a minute, this is, this is not right. And they search the scriptures, and maybe they'll come, maybe a remnant will come to Christ, just like the Bible predicts, right? All right. Now, when you, when we, I think we covered Job chapter one. Job was allowed to be tempted of the devil, and fire came down from heaven and destroyed his sheep. And that's in verse 16, Job 1, 16. So evidently, Satan is allowed to mimic some of the miracles of God. Because I don't believe God burned up his sheep. I think Satan was allowed to do it. But if you want to, you could read Job 1. We covered that a little bit in the previous study. So, now, the wicked. In Psalms 21, verse 9, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Wow. Now here's an interesting verse. Psalms chapter 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment. Remember in the transfiguration when uh, Elijah and Moses were on the mountain and Christ was transfigured before, oh, I think it was what, Peter and John, I'm not sure, but uh, his, his, he became like white light. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain? Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Now remember, people, uh, remember Christ is going to be coming in the clouds with glory, a cloud of witnesses. Yeah, the Bible's got a lot of symbolism in it. It all ties in. Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh? upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Remember when Adam and Eve were booted out of the garden? And what did the angel have that kept the way? He had a sword, a flaming sword that turned every way. Who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers a flaming fire fire, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. All right, let's keep going here. Now, what I find interesting, what is the sun? Is the sun, I don't know, is the sun a representation of God? I mean, from it, from a sun, we get warmth. We get light, and the sun is fire. I mean, scientists theorize that it's uh, nuclear fusion. I don't really think they know for sure, but that seems, with our limited knowledge, that's what it is. So is the sun in the sky sort of our, I wouldn't say an idol, but perhaps a representation for us to consider what God is? He's warmth, he's light, and he's fire. Or it can be. And believe me, believers and unbelievers are both going to have fire. And we're going to get to that soon. But for believers, it's good. For the unbelievers, mm, not so much. In Psalm 627, they ask, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? All 
All right, in Proverbs 25, verse 21. Now, there's a difference between our enemies and the Lord's enemies, okay? Sometimes we make enemies just by doing stupid things, uh, not thinking things through. Um, I mean, there's a big difference between our enemies and the Lord's enemies. Keep that in mind. We're not to love the Lord's enemies. All right, Proverbs 25, 21. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Didn't Jesus say something like that in the um, Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes? I forget exactly where, but yeah, he did. Isaiah chapter 43, starting in verse 1. Isaiah, what a wonderful book. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. Now remember, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. But now... Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Now this is Old Testament. It says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, the flood, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Just like the, uh, the Hebrew children, right? In the fire with Nebuchadnezzar. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together. It's funny that word nations there sometimes is translated as Gentiles. It's the same word. King James translators just were not consistent. I'm not saying it's an error. I'm just saying same word translated two different ways. It depends on the context. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witness that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Ah, God chose has chosen. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. There is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, 
For your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth a chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise, they are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Is that a reference to the New Covenant, the New Testament? Now it shall bring forth, ye shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Uh, this sounds like in the kingdom. Verse 20, the beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the de desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thine burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I will not, uh, I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. Thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned, and that's Adam, I think, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. All right, turn to Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah has 66 chapters. The Bible has 66 books. The last few chapters in Isaiah uh, read like the last few chapters in the book of Revelation. Uh, read Isaiah 66 and read Revelation, oh, book 21 and chapter 21 and chapter 22. And uh, I don't know. They seem to follow each other pretty closely. All right, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Isaiah 66, verse 2. For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things hath been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is, eff, is as if he slew a man, he that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. There's a verse in Thessalonians where God says he would bring them strong delusion that they would believe a lie. And we read that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Speaking of the man of sin, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish 
because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not Satan, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Doesn't that sound just like what we read? Isaiah 66, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake. Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. And I believe that's uh, speaking of Mary with Christ. I believe in the virgin birth that her birth was pain, painless. Read Genesis chapter 3, uh, around, around 14, verse 15, 14, 15, 16. Uh, God said that Eve would be uh, have pain in childbirth. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. She's going to have, um, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. So she's going to have pain in childbirth. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You know, I'm just wondering, if Eve had eaten an apple or fruit that she wasn't supposed to eat, why did the Lord give her a toothache? No, instead he uh, gave her pain in childbirth. Does the punishment fit the crime? I don't know. Think about it. All right, back to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 7. Before she travailed, I think this is Mary, before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. The virgin birth, people, very important doctrine. People think it's, you know, they just added it. No. That's why I say stick with the King James. You could build doctrine on a King James. NIV is garbage along with all the rest of them, most of them. The um, Geneva Bible's okay, and the Webster's Bible's okay, but I don't know. Verse 8, who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she bought, brought forth her children. And people will try to convince you that 1948, there was a nation born in a day. Oh yeah, the United Nations, that satanic communist organization, created a nation. Yeah, they did. But it wasn't God's nation. Verse 9. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? 
Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles, same word as nation, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream, then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. I believe that's uh, like when you're bouncing a kid on your knee. I don't know. As one who his mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. What's an indignation? Extreme hatred. Now here's the punchline. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Fire. The Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So obviously this is the second's coming, people. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 14 and verse 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat up on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. It's not an earthly temple. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out up from the altar which had power over fire, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Now remember, Israel was likened to grapes. Remember that. Verse 19, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the wine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress. Press. Blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridles by the space of of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. All right, let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 5. I'm going to prove to you that um, Israel is grapes. Isaiah 5 verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein. Doesn't this read just like Revelation? Yeah. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Ever heard the saying, oh, he's, well, never mind. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, 
and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor dig, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, and behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Bingo. Let's go back to Isaiah 66. Oh, let's see. Verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Uh, verse 16, Isaiah 66, 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord will be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Huh. Makes me think giving up bacon is not a bad idea. Read that again, people. Verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and will... Send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off. What isles are afar off? England? Ireland? Scotland? I don't know. That have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and all swift beasts to, to my holy mountain in Jerusalem. I'm sorry, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord. As the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also, I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, huh, we read that in Revelation, don't we? As for the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Uh, let's see, Isaiah 65, verse 17, second to the last chapter, ties in with uh, Revelation. Isaiah 65, 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mine. 2 Peter 3, 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. All right, let's take a look at Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 35. And he, Jesus, and he sat down and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first... The same shall be last of all, the servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, 
receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth us, not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Uh, a small millstone 70 pounds, people. So how would you like to have a 70-pound rock tied around your neck and to be cast into the sea? I don't think he could swim very, very well. Verse 43, Jesus says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off, for it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire, into the fire, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Didn't we just read that in Isaiah 66? Uh, in verse 24, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed immense against me, for their worm shall not die, Neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. There you go, Isaiah 66, 24. Back to Mark 9, verse 44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into a fire that shall never be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And amazing, Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, oh, well, there's no fire in hell. That's, you know, yeah. They don't, they're, they actually, they don't really believe what Jesus said. Verse 49, for everyone shall be salted with fire, salted with fire. I wish I totally understood that. I'd explain it. I don't, but I know it's there. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. All right, let's take a look at some uh, wormy things, right? Isaiah chapter 14, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Now, there's three different words that are translated as hell. One of them means the grave, and the Jehovah's Witnesses will always go to that one. Oh yeah, you're in the grave, you're in the, the ground, your body's rotting in the ground, that's hell. Uh, yeah, but they totally ignore the other two uh, words that are translated as hell. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. That's a musical instrument, people. The worm, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Didn't Jesus talk about the worm that dieth not? Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You see, people, Satan's doom was foretold in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, Genesis 3. All right, uh, Revelation 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 10. And the devil that deceived, deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Uh, you don't believe in an uh, eternal judgment for the beast and the false prophet? A lake of fire? Really? Revelation 21.8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and saucers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Verse 20 and verse 14. Revelation 20 and verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Uh, let's take a look. Revelation 19, 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped this image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. We'll cover this more later. All right, I think I'm going to close this out. Uh, three quarters of an hour. Um... Chaplain Bob says, All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.